As the civil rights movement was ending, the president announced the war on drugs as the biggest issue of the time. The government claimed that low-income neighborhoods were to blame for drug use and distribution. Crack cocaine epidemic. Crack, 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 crack cocaine epidemic. Soon enough, the media displayed images of the average drug user, which seemed to always consist of a black face and a crack pipe. This sent the message all over the United States that people of color were the real problem. As incarceration rates rose, new laws were passed that specifically targeted people of color by making it easier to incarcerate them for longer periods of time. It landed 46 people in jail, uh, nearly all of whom were black. Then, of course, they quickly started getting processed through the system with court-appointed lawyers, with all-white jurors, and we began to get sentences like 99, 75, 320 years. Even though rights were won by the civil rights movement, it seemed that people of color were being criminalized more than ever. tough security's gotten since 9-11, it's like really like, you know, how the drugs coming into the United States now, how? I mean, you know, I don't have an airplane, you know, I don't have a car that's gonna make it with California place to Mexico and back to uh, Colombia. I can't yeah. even drive to Colombia. In 1987, during what the media claimed to be the height of black crime, a new and extremely controversial case arose, the McCleskey versus Kemp case. McCleskey, facing the death penalty, attempted to use statistical evidence of racial discrimination in Georgia's death penalty system to show that his rights under the 14th Amendment were being violated. Although the Supreme Court accepted the evidence, they concluded that unless McCluskey could prove that there was racial bias in his specific case, the statistical evidence did not prove unequal treatment under the law. One tenth of the town's black population was uh, escorted in handcuffs to jail. We were told that this was the most massive rural drug conspiracy ever uncovered uh, in West Texas. When all the major media sources, including 60 Minutes, covered the Tulia story, they told of a lone redneck cop by the name of Tom Coleman who hated black people. But who was Tom Coleman working for? When you follow the trail of money, he was merely a pawn of a law enforcement policy that profits from making large arrests. It's a ploy. Well, this drug money funds terror. It's a ploy. Ploy. Uh, a manipulation. Ploy. Drug money funds terror. I mean, why should I believe that? Because it's a fact. A fact. F-A-C-T, fact. So you're saying that I, I should believe it because it's true. That's, that's your argument. It is true. The CIA also helped the Contras raise money for arms by introducing crack cocaine into California. However, some people are blaming people of color themselves for the problem. CIA fights drugs. CIA does not encourage drugs. The lower economic people are not holding up their end of this deal. I'm talking about these people who cry when their son is standing in an orange suit. Where were you when he was two? Too many fathers are AWOL. 
missing from too many lives and too many homes. They've abandoned their responsibilities. They're acting like boys instead of men. No, you can't blame the people for these things when the government itself is discriminating against its own people. The United States government turned their head and let this cocaine come into the United States of America. Allow Gary Webb to have full access. This whole thing is orchestrated. I am a former Los Angeles police narcotics detective and I work South Central Los Angeles and I will tell you, Director Deutsch, that the agency has dealt drugs throughout this country for a long time. <laughs>